denominator. And what this allows us to do is understand which of the schools have better potential. It's, I, I am not suggesting that this can be boiled down to simple math. It can't be. There are so many other factors. Uh, we still have to use our judgment. We still have to use our understanding of the community and the community values. But I think this is a valid tool in helping, in assisting us determine which combination of buildings offers the greatest problem to develop a great plan for the future. This first chart is the community costs. It's the educational evaluation scores that you had put together as a function of the community costs, rec the costs recommended at these meetings, at the, t the 54 meetings. What you can see is, in this case, higher is better. It's higher benefit. So you can see there are some schools that have much higher benefit based on the proposed scope of work. One of the things you're going to notice across the next four charts is that the scope of work changes the outcome. With only one exception, schools will change either above or below the lowest quartile. There was one exception. Let's see. Okay, the next one is comparing the triage in 10 per square foot. And so what you see here is there are a couple schools that fall in the lowest quartile uh, where they don't offer as much value after spending the triage in 10 square foot dollars. The third is using the combined costs, and again, that's taking the schools, the elementaries, to a 550 number and the middle schools to a 550 number. And here again, you see there are a couple schools that don't offer quite the promise using that particular scope of work and those dollars. And then finally, life cycle costs. And here again, a few that fall below the lowest quartile. So that's a comparative analysis that helps us understand uh, what combinations of buildings can help us put together the the best plan as stewards of public tax dollars. So findings number one. I mentioned that there was uh, one exception, and there was. We, I've just run through four cost comparatives, one educational adequacy comparison, and then four um, comparative cost benefit analysis. That's nine different comparisons. Neely fell in the lowest quartile of all nine. The other finding that we have is that as you put together a plan for the future, you should look to make a priority to address those schools that fell below adequate on the educational evaluation. The other findings, these next two slides, were the things, the themes that bubbled up over and over and over again. And this then becomes what I'm going to call our planning principles. These are the things that are going to be the subject of your work tonight. These are the things that we heard over and over. And so as we look at putting a scope of work together to map over each building, these are the things that you have told us are most important. Safety and security um, in this day and age. Understanding uh, what it takes to provide a secure learning environment. We have buildings that are multi-story. ADA and accessibility issues are a big concern to you. Site issues. You have, as you have the chart shown, you've got some very restricted sites. It creates safety issues and other site issues. Environmental issues. Things that affect student performance, like lighting, climate control, acoustics. Issues related to athletic activity and performing arts facilities. Those exploration spaces. That's a concern to you. Adequate and appropriate spatial, special ed programs. You know, when special ed programs really came into being, most of these schools were built. So it's so frequent, it's so typical to see that special ed programs are housed in spaces that one way or another aren't adequate for the program. And then the size and functionality of classrooms multi-purpose space. We heard that a lot about we're teaching differently, we need to have flexibility in our classrooms and in our multi-purpose spaces. The storage. As long as we involve teachers, storage is always going to be one of the top priorities. And teachers were very, very involved in this process. Size and equipment related to nursing stations and health rooms came through as a recurring theme. The limitations based on our outdated and sometimes old science labs. Again, flexibility of instruction spaces and furnishings was a common theme. Planning and workspaces for instructional staff. Again, we teach differently now. We need to to provide the spaces for our teachers to plan appropriately. Kitchen and food service areas 
and finally, spaces for preschool programming. So, again, the three things we want you to take from this presentation, where we are in the process. We're concluding analysis. We, are, we, we know what the, the data is. We're about to begin the synthesis, the what-if process. We have conducted a rigorous assessment. There is a lot of data. People have been, there have been an ex extremely thorough review of your facility, both by community members and by trained professionals who have been through every inch of your facility. And then finally, what the data tells us. It tells us what the community's goals are for each facility represented in those charts. It tells us what the overarching goals are represented in those last two slides. And it tells us that we've got enough information that we can move forward into the what if section, start to begin thinking about building a plan for the future. This is the fun part. This is where you envision the possibilities, envision what can be. And to guide us in that, we are going to ask you as part of your small, small group work uh, to do some exercise on those topics that we've just covered. Okay, here is our small group work activity, and I believe uh, each of you have a copy in your packet. The blue copy will be the recorder's copy in your group. I'll just go over some brief instructions. Um, so each group should select a recorder and spokesperson. Um, so the recorder is responsible for completing the information on this sheet, and this is the sheet that we'll be collecting at the end of the meeting. Um, the spokesperson should facilitate discussions, keep the group focused and on task so the work is completed in the allotted time, and report the group's information if time permits. And we are asking that staff members at the tables allow our community members to take those roles. Please make sure the information recorded on the group's worksheet reflects the collective decision of everyone at the table. You'll want to monitor your time in progress to make sure you complete the work in the allotted time. And at the end of the session, we'll collect the worksheet that has been completed by the recorder. Okay, so if I could just take a moment to uh, have you look at that small group work activity. There are two tasks, and task one is um, two parts. On the first part, which is on the first page, um, we're asking that you look at the degree of importance for each item in providing a quality, quality education for St. Joseph School District students. So each item can be rated at um, a five to one scale. And the five would then be the greater importance, and the one would be the lesser importance. So that's each item. If you then turn the page over, part two of that, task number one, um, asks you to then rank any fives that you had. So any fives that you put in part one, if you'll then rank that first, second, third, and that's, that's part two of task one. And then in task two, we, um, we've shared a lot of data, but we would, we would really like to have your suggestions. So we've left some room there. If you could um, go through your 